Dr. Carl Hart is an associate professor of psychology and psychiatry at Columbia, uh, and he's done research into drug abuse and drug addiction. And he went on Joe Rogan's podcast where he proceeded to drop a truth bomb on us. Take a look. That term drugs is just such a weighted and loaded term. The fact that, that that term could be used for a steroid as well as for aspirin or coffee. It's 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 really kind of unfortunate that we have this one blanket term that applies to psychedelics and as well it applies to testosterone and it applies to heroin. I mean, there's too many things. <laughs> I actually like that. Do you? Do you? <laughs> yeah. Why, 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 why don't you like it? I mean, because when we think about one of the things that bothers me about the psychedelic kind of movement, and um, God bless them, people who enjoy this thing. <laughs> but, you know, people separate their drug use, like the psychedelic users, mm -hmm. like I'm using this to go on a higher plane or for some other mm -hmm. reason, as opposed to the person on the corner who's getting high. It's like... You can rationalize your drug use however you want, but you're using drugs, mm -hmm. and it's all the same thing. You know, so it's like it's a beautiful thing. It's like we're all together in this. Mm -hmm. I'm not better than you with my drug use, and you're not better than me with your drug oh, use. Oh, I so see. I, I love that. that I it's see. It's a, the elitism of the psychedelic exactly. community that annoys you. Exactly. And, or other people. I mean, this notion, like even the marijuana smokers, when they talk about marijuana and not talk about crack and not talk about heroin, what the fuck is that? I mean, come on, you're doing a drug just like I'm doing this drug. And so it's hypocrisy. I, I was in Geneva. I just got back in the States. Um, and I was working in a heroin clinic where they administer heroin every day, seven days a week, twice a day, to people who meet criteria for heroin addiction. And when I say they administer heroin, I don't mean like small doses. I mean doses that go up to like a gram a day, a thousand milligrams a day, a lot more than what people use here in the States typically. And, and these people who are getting heroin every day, a large percentage of them also go to work. A large percentage of them um, have families and they're taking care of their responsibilities. They are, this is their treatment and this is a treatment that works for them. But their treatment include two daily doses of intravenous heroin. <laughs> seven days a week you know and and so like when i think about well one of the reasons i went there and i, I did this because of the way we think of heroin in this country we think of it as such as evil drug and that's just uh, american mythology and that's just wrong and that's ignorance and but that's how many including drug experts in this country think of heroin but that's just I, we have all of this great technology, but we're so ignorant when it comes to many of these drugs. So heroin administered intravenously on a daily basis is not, it's not devastating? No. In fact, some people would do better by having a daily dose, a daily dose of heroin or another opiate. Um, no, it's not devastating. Wow, this yeah. Don't lie. Even the progressives out there and the people who think they're open-minded on this are like, whoa! Oh, mind blown. Now, I've told this story on air before, but I think it bears mentioning again. My friend's, one of my best friend's dad is a world-renowned lung doctor and an ICU doctor. And so he goes all over the place and he gives speeches in all these different countries. And, you know, the people who come to listen to his speeches are young doctors who are successful and who have a career and are dedicated and all this stuff. And uh, apparently, I don't know exactly where the person was visiting, whether it was Switzerland or whether it was France or wherever. But uh, after one of the speeches he gave, remember, world-renowned doctor here. A group of st uh, students, young doctors, came up to him and said, Hey, we're going to go do some heroin. You want to join us? He was like, what the fuck? Because he also has a more Americanized view of, of drugs. Understandably so. He's American. And the idea that they're getting at here is the reefer madness mentality. Remember the old reefer madness movie? Oh my god, marijuana is going to make you... Get raped behind a dumpster. Just ridiculous propaganda. You'll go crazy. Ooh! We don't just have reefer madness for reefer, for marijuana in this country. 
We have drug propaganda that's embedded in your mind for drugs across the board. The fact that you watching this probably thought, well, if you do cocaine, your life is ruined. If you do heroin, your life is ruined. But you could do marijuana, that's fine. The fact that you categorize, well, that one's worse, that one's better, this one's a problem, shows that you fell for the propaganda. Everybody, at some point or another, fell for the propaganda. And what Carl Hart is saying here is, look, I'm the one that did the fucking research. I'm the expert here. I've been all around. I see how different places do it. The idea that if you do cocaine or do heroin, you're done. Your life's over. You're going to be sucking dicks behind an Arby's soon. Not true. He's telling you right here. There are places around the world in modern nations where they have treatment centers where you go and you get a dose of heroin. And then you go about your business. You go work. You know, you come home. Now, I know a lot of people listen to this like, that's crazy. I would never even consider that. That option seems off the table. But just understand that you're the one that's being dogmatic. You're the one that's not open to evidence. You're the one that doesn't care about empiricism. You're the one that doesn't care about what actually works. He's the expert. He's telling you, I've seen this. It works. So this isn't a matter of opinion. This is a matter of, oh, I see that this person gets heroin two times a day, seven days a week, and they take care of their kids, and they pay their bills, and they do all these things. You didn't think that was possible. Don't lie. It is possible. In fact, at a TED Talk Dr. Carl Hart gave, he said that uh, 80 to 90 percent, listen closely here, of all drug users are moderate users. Do I need to repeat that? 80 to 90 percent of all drug users are moderate users. And everybody needs to check their fucking biases here, man. Because I see this all the time. Whether, e progressives also have their biases. They might think, oh, I don't have my bias. Nonsense. Go look at any progressive show, including the network I'm on, the Young Turks, the main channel. You go look through their video archive history. You tell me how many positive stories they did about weed, almost 100%, and how many negative stories they did about opiate pills. Almost 100% of the stories are negative. The idea doesn't enter their mind. Well, maybe there's such thing as a moderate user who can recreationally use it and take care of their business. Yeah, that does exist. 80 to 90% of them, that exists. Dr. Carl Hart goes on to explain that as well. And I have personal experience, because I'm one of the guys who, the drugs I actually like are the drugs that nobody else admits to liking. I love fucking Adderall pills recreationally. I've, unfortunately, I can't get them on a regular basis. But I would love popping one of those things and having a good time. I like opiate pills. Again, I can't get them on a regular basis, but I've taken them recreationally for years. And I never had a fucking problem. But this idea that society tells you, no, by definition, you have a problem because you keep taking it. Well, who the fuck are you? I'm still taking care of my business, and it gives me a little pep. It makes my mood a little better, so piss off. Who are you to say that? It's all, it all comes from a moralistic dogmatism where the idea is, no, just simply by the fact that you take it, you are wrong and bad. In other words, I don't care about what actually happens after you take it. If you're productive, if you're happy, yada, yada. No, no, just the fact that you took it, you are bad. Well, that is dogmatism, that is moralism, and that's very close to fundamentalist religion in how you think. And finally, let me just say this. Um, crocodile and, and crystal meth, for example. So these are two drugs that really are dangerous. And a lot of people are thinking there as I'm doing this rant, like, come on, Kyle, there aren't some drugs that are fucked up and there's no hope you can't use them moderately. Those drugs do exist, but why do those drugs exist? Those drugs exist because... Drugs are illegal. The problem with Crocodile is that it is a cheap heroin knockoff where they cut it with all different types of chemicals that literally make your skin rot off. If you legalize, tax, and regulate drugs, you don't need to cut it with the nonsense that makes your fucking skin peel off. Crystal meth, same thing. It's got all types of nonsense in it. Diesel fuel, nail polish remover, terrible stuff. That's what's bad for you in crystal meth. So in other words, if you had legalized Adderall pills, amphetamine pills, whatever, in safe doses, people would get that instead of going to a back alley and injecting fucking diesel fuel or smoking diesel fuel and nail polish remover chemical crystal meth. So the problem is because it's illegal. That's the problem. Almost all the problems go away once you legalize, tax, and regulate. So let's understand this. Now, I'm doing a lot of talking here, and I'm not an expert in this, admittedly, but you just heard it from the expert. You heard it from Dr. Carl Hart, and he's one of the only people telling the truth about drugs.